I'm Todd Goodman, and in this segment, we focus on certainly the fastest, if not the most traditional, of all winter sports, ice hockey. And joining me to preview how our local clubs might fare this season is longtime referee and TV3 hockey analyst, Pete Caggiano. Pete, good to see you back. Thanks, Todd. Last season, of course, Brick beating Montclair 2-1 to one in the state championship. A game seen here on TV3, Montclair coming back as one of the strong clubs. And we are going to look at the top five as well as players to watch and a couple of neat insights into behind the scenes at hockey rinks, including this great rink, South Mountain Arena. But first, we want to break down the North Jersey Interscholastic Hockey League for some of the viewers who may not be familiar with how the divisions are worked out and where our local clubs fall in. We're fortunate enough at TV3 to have several of the top state championship contenders in our viewing area, and we'll be seeing some of them later in the season. Let's go right now to our top five. And again, keep in mind the season just started, and this may change and probably will throughout the course of the year. But as far as the beginning of the year goes, Pete certainly looks as though Montclair has to be seen as the number one team in our area. Absolutely, Todd. Last year, Montclair went right to the state finals before losing to Brick by just one goal. They've had a long line of tradition at Montclair, starting with coaches from way back with Don Ecclestone to Bruce Parker to now Chuck Wilson. They stress defense. And also, Todd, Montclair has the advantage of having their own rink. They can practice five days a week. We move on to our second-ranked team, and that's the team we're seeing here tonight, the Seton Hall Pirates. A lot of people felt, well, they're not as good as they used to be, but they have the one factor, and that is their longtime head coach, John Warchall. John Warchall has been involved in hockey in New Jersey for umpteen years. In fact, John played on the U.S. national team in the early 60s, and he brings that invaluable service to his team. He's able to relate experiences that he went through when he was a youngster playing the game. Uh, let's move on to our third ranked team and that would be Summit. Summit coming in, the Hilltoppers haven't really been known for hockey throughout the years, but they are an up and coming club. Summit has a disadvantage in the fact they play in the National Conference B Division, which is the second best division in the league. They only have four seniors on the squad this year, so they are playing for this year as well as next year. Our fourth team, our last two teams, are Verona and West Essex. Let's talk about Verona first. Okay. Verona just entered the league a few years ago. They played a junior varsity schedule for a while until they were able to develop a team, and now just their third year in the league, they're playing ex extremely well. Also, Verona has the distinction of having a female goaltender. Only the, I believe, the second time in the league that's happened. About five or six years ago, West Orange also had a female goaltender. Her name is Claudine Petruca. She's only a sophomore, and we had a chance to talk with her. From a few rows up in the stands, it appears as though just another long-haired goaltender has stepped between the pipes. But a closer look reveals makeup, perfume, and a smile with every tooth in place. Meet Claudine Petruca sophomore at Verona High School and goalie for the Hillbillies. It all started with my sister. Uh, she's four years older and uh, she was in love with Don Maloney who used to play for the Rangers and she wanted to go to their camp so as a little sister I just tagged along and I started playing that way. We couldn't help but wonder how a nice girl like Claudine could end up in a place like this. Well, a lot of guys I used to look like a guy so a lot of guys never knew I was a girl until I never got changed in the locker room with them so I don't know they accepted me pretty well. She is um, treated as you know one of the guys, and uh, you know, she fits in real well. She's well respected, and um, and she works as hard as anyone else on the team. But come on, Claudine, you can't be serious. Do you really feel comfortable with all those guys? They accept me pretty good. I feel like one of the guys out there, and they pretty much they tease me a lot. <laughs> they push me around and joke around with me, so it's pretty cool. She can stop a puck. It's not like she's just nothing in the net. It's good to know you have two goalies and just treat her the same as anybody else. They uh, always stick up for me out there. Sometimes maybe I feel even more than uh, the other goalie, John. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I feel I could take care of myself, but it's nice to have people protecting me out there. Well, that's quite a story. A female goaltender who actually will put on makeup and perfume as a way to psych out her opponents. It's, uh, it's an interesting story. She's only a sophomore and may end up being the starting goaltender in years to come. Our fifth and final team is West Essex. West Essex rounds out our top five in the TV3 viewing area. Last year, West Essex finished with a winning record and qualified for the state tournament. This year, they've split their first two games, but have showed a lot of promise 
in their practices and in their performance. And we're going to come back and take a look at our top six players, players to watch, a TV3 all-star team, if you will. But first, as is traditional in hockey, it's time for the Zamboni. Hey, let me give you a little history about the Zamboni first. First of all, the, the owner of uh, Zamboni was Frank J. Zamboni. He created this piece of machinery. I believe it was oh, in the late 40s, early 1950s. Basically what this particular machine does is it makes ice at the same time it takes away ice. You lower your blade, you adjust the blade to get all the ruts out of the ice as best as possible. And you very slowly at the same time as the, the blade is taking a layer of ice off, at the same time you're putting a layer of ice right back on with the water. That's what your water is for. That's how you get that glossy look. And it serves its purpose. Uh, I really can't see uh, how you can better the, this piece of equipment right here. Well, Pete, I've never had the opportunity to drive a Zamboni or even ride on one. How about you? I was asked to drive one at one time when the Zamboni driver was unable to be found, but I declined. It's too big of a machine for me. And in the meantime, though, you have a much tougher job as an official now running on 14 years in and around this area. Tell us what that's all about and explain to the fans how the two-referee system works as opposed to the system in the, at the professional level where we see one official calling everything on the ice. Absolutely, Todd. The NHL uses a three-man system which consists of one referee and two linesmen. The referee is in charge of calling penalties. The linesmen call infractions such as offsides, icings, two-line passes. In the high school and collegiate level, the officiating is done by two people with equal abilities and equal jurisdiction. What happens is each man has the authority for both infractions as well as penalties. And by using the two-man system, you're able to cover the entire ice surface. The game is getting so fast now, it's tough for one guy to follow. And the positioning of the officials, one person right on top of the play, the other person behind the play, you're able to cover the entire ice. And right now, we're going to take a look at a very special official, a man who had an opportunity to work a professional game really wasn't supposed to. I think we know who we're talking about. That is someone who's been working on the ice, in and around this area, as Pete has for many, many years, and he is Paul McGinnis. Let's go, let's go, Santa. All right. Oh, you heard his ankle? Knee. They hit, they hit knee to knee when they, they ran into each other. 16-12. I'm trying to hold on to you. You wouldn't let me go. Are you the guy over on the board? Watch your skates, guys. Watch your skates. McGinnis has been calling penalties on East Coast hockey rinks for over 30 years. After his family's arrival from Canada in 1951, McGinnis and his 10 brothers and sisters began looking for a place to skate. At the time, there were no uh, uh, rinks, really, except Baker Rink down in Princeton, and that wasn't available for uh, public. Uh, so I really didn't skate for about five years. Then the following year, uh, Essex County opened Branchbrook, and then the following year after that, which was in 58, then South Mountain opened up. From Branchbrook, McGinnis moved on to South Mountain Arena in West Orange and helped form not only some of the state's existing leagues, but also began to pool the area's able-bodied hockey officials. I think there were about two referees, and they were doing all the games at the time. Uh, I, along with uh, John Wurchill and Joe Hanneback, uh, got our, uh, got our uh, license, and we took the test to be referees, and then that really started it up. While Paul McGinnis has always been widely respected by coaches and players throughout New Jersey, it wasn't until the 8th of May, 1988, that McGinnis became a permanent part of hockey folklore in, of all places, the Stanley Cup playoffs. It all happened because of the uh, uh, Koharski and the donut situation with, uh, with uh, Schoenfeld. The next day, the uh, league uh, suspended Schoenfeld. At the time the game was supposed to start, uh, the referees walked out, and they did see, uh, see Schoenfeld behind the bench, and they walked off. I'm an off-ice official, of course, and uh, we were at the arena a couple of hours before the game that next uh, that uh, Sunday, Mother's Day. Uh, that was when 
Macaulay came back in and he said, you guys are on. He said, you're going to have to do this game. <laughs> and so uh, in the first period, they might have uh, taken it a little, easier, a little easier than normal. But by the second period, then uh, it, it turned into a regular game. And we had the, uh, the normal cursing at us and telling us where to go and so forth. And they played uh, their normal hockey game after that. The, the coaches from both teams started, uh, started screaming at each other and threatening each other. That was a little scary, but we got them settled down, and then after that, uh, it was uh, it was fairly normal, and uh, we had a couple more penalties to call, but uh, there were no no unusual ones, and we got through it pretty good. Easily the highlight of your career? Oh yes, quite easily. And now we want to take time, as promised, to look at the top six players in our viewing area before we get to high school wrestling. This is sort of what we might call a TV3 all-star team. And in goal, certainly no question, we mentioned his name before, Ryan Hallam, the goaltender for Montclair. Ryan Hallam, the senior for Montclair, an exceptional goaltender. He has a quick glove hand, and what he does is he controls the rebound every time. Also for Montclair, at defense as we move up to the blue line, another senior, George Nemeth. George Nemeth is the fellow who helps Ryan Hallam out in goal. He's a big guy, strong defenseman, has a good shot from the point, and likes to take the body, a real physical player. The other defensemen in our players to watch in the TV3 area, much younger, much less experienced. Number nine, Austin Spenny out of Summit. Austin Spenny plays for Summit. He's just a sophomore, and right now Summit only has four seniors, so Austin will be par part of that rebuilding program. Moving up to the wings at left wing from Verona, Chris Bellino, whose father is an assistant coach on the club. Chris Bellino is just a sophomore, part of that Verona upstart club of just a few years ago. He is an exceptional goal scorer, likes to shoot the puck, and is not bashful. Anytime he's over that blue line, he'll wind up and let it go. Moving over to the right wing spot now, we have Rocky Fritz of Seton Hall. Rocky Fritz, a senior, his third year on the varsity. This kid can play the game. Not only can he play the game, but he's a tough player, a hard-nosed player. Is not afraid to mix it up in the corners. And again, like some of the other players we had mentioned this evening, is the leader on the club. When you need the big goal, Rocky will score it for you. And finally, at center, and a lot of these guys will switch at the forward positions from center to wing, is Brian Felber of Montclair. Brian Felber is the younger brother of Don Felber, who played for Montclair in previous years. And just like his brother, this kid's a goal scorer. Brian, again, not bashful to shoot, is a good player, especially around in front of the net. He has good, quick hands and can beat goaltenders on rebounds. So there you have a look at the top six players we feel it'll be important to watch. Of course, there are many more. We just don't have the time to cover them all. But make sure you get out and watch them play. Pete, 1990-91, promises to be another exciting hockey season. Any predictions? I don't know about a prediction, but I'll give you a promise. You will see some of the best high school ice hockey in the country right here in New Jersey. In fact, last year when an all-star team was put together and traveled to Chicago, they came in second place overall. I think we're in for an exciting season. All right. I want to thank you for joining us here in Countdown to Glory. Stay tuned. High School Wrestling will be coming up next. For Pete Caggiano, I'm Todd Goodman. We'll see you at the rink.